Welcome to the Dream Dose. I'm Mike Ravenscroft, Startup Success Manager at Dream Ventures Health Tech. At Dream It, we spend a lot of time helping founders perfect their customer and investor pitches. But nailing your pitch is just the first step to a successful customer or investor interaction. The real meat of the conversation starts with the Q&A. And it's here that we see founders start to flounder. In this dose, we're going to focus on avoiding five common mistakes founders make when answering questions. DreamIt Ventures has been investing in great early stage startups for over a decade. The DreamIt Dose allows us to share best practices to help even more founders. Tell us about your great startup using the links below. Why is answering questions effectively so important? Well, if a solid pitch establishes your credibility, answering questions well cements it. Answer questions inaccurately, evasively, or with hefty doses of BS thrown in, and you'll leave people wondering, does this person really know their shh? Stuff? Or worse, is this somebody I can trust? The second you lose trust, game over. Nobody wants to start a relationship with somebody they don't trust. Let's cover the five common mistakes founders make when answering questions. Mistake number one, not answering the question. Frequently, founders simply do not answer the question that's being posed. At DreamIt, we hear over a thousand pitches a year, and hardly a week goes by where someone does not react to a pitch by saying, OMG, the founder could not give a straight answer to a question. Politicians are masters at pivoting away from questions that are being asked, but if you're a founder, this is not an effective tactic. When you don't give a straightforward answer to a straightforward question, people start to sense discomfort. For example, an investor asks you, what's your monthly recurring revenue? And you respond by talking about how your new sales approach is crushing it and how your new salesperson is a rock star. This is a tell that you feel uncomfortable talking about your MRR. And it's not like you won't get asked the question again and again until you answer it. Clear and concise answers build credibility, while non-answers destroy it. Mistake number two, blabbery. A verbose answer to a question can be as bad as not answering it at all. Why? First, the longer you talk, the more you risk confusing your audience or simply losing their attention. Second, you're usually just trying to get to another meeting or get to the next step in the process. So if you run out of time before addressing all their major concerns or objections, you won't get another meeting. Our rule of thumb, there's no question that can't be answered in under 45 seconds. If the audience wants more, they'll ask. Mistake number three, misunderstanding the question and not asking for clarification. We see this one a lot. Customers and investors often ramble and wrap several questions into one, and sometimes their question is as clear as mud. So instead of jumping right into an answer, ask for clarification, or paraphrase the question and then ask, do I understand your question correctly? If you don't pause to clarify, you might end up answering the wrong question. Most people are too polite to interrupt you and say, oh, what I actually was asking you is this. They'll usually wait until you're done speaking, then ask you a slightly modified version of their original question again. It's awkward and it wastes time. It's not your fault when people ask confusing or convoluted questions, but if you don't pause to clarify or restate the question, you'll risk burning precious minutes providing superfluous information that does not move the conversation forward. Mistake number four, the pile on. Ever heard the expression too many cooks? When teams answer questions, things get really messy. We often see team members step on each other's toes, jump in to add to an answer that was already given, or my personal favorite, if I could, let me answer that question a little differently. None of this is helpful. Multiple answers from multiple people always muddies the waters. And when teams contradict each other, or when it looks like the CEO is not in control of the Q&A, people get really uncomfortable and the entire team loses credibility. The solution, the CEO handles all questions or directs all questions to a specific team member. Mistake number five, treating Q&A as a one-way street. Founders often take what I call the firing squad approach to Q&A. Founders walk into a room, stand with their backs against the wall, and get blasted with questions. Granted, sitting in a room with a CMO at a major health system or with a potential lead VC can be really intimidating. But you're not up against the wall. You're at the table, and part of your job as a founder is to gain additional insight. If you get a question from a healthcare leader about how you would run a trial to purchase, maybe ask them, if you don't mind, could you explain your process for how you typically evaluate new technology platforms? Answering a question with a question is a classic and impactful sales technique. Remember, the more time your customer spends providing insight into their problems and challenges, the better equipped you'll be to properly position your product or platform. Same goes for investors. If you don't ask any questions about how they invest, what their investment thesis is, or what their diligence timelines look like, you'll look like you care more about getting funded than you do about finding a strong partner. Here's a quick recap. Number one, answer the question that's being asked briefly. You score points for being concise. Even the most complex question can be answered in under 45 seconds. Number two, repeat the question in your own words to make sure you understand it. 
You lose no points by asking for clarification. Number three, don't pivot away from a question. You're not a politician. Be honest and direct in your answers. Number four, avoid a team answer at all costs. CEO is air traffic control. One question gets one answer from one person. And finally, your questions matter too. Be sure to ask smart questions of your customers and VCs to get them talking. That's your dream at Dose in about five minutes. Now you're ready to answer the tough questions you'll get from investors and customers. For more on answering questions from VCs, check out Steve Barsh's Dose number seven, how to answer VC investor questions like a pro. Please leave your questions in the comments section. And if you found this video helpful, like this video and subscribe to the channel. To see all of our doses, go to dreamit.com slash dose. And if you're the founder of a great health tech startup, visit dreamit.com slash apply. Welcome to the Dream It Dose. Why is answering questions in <laughs> Well, if a solid pit, clear and concise, what? clear. Is this normal? Like, does everybody do this?